Good morning, church. I just want to welcome all of you here this morning. Um, And before we actually get started, I'm going to ask you to stand up again and greet the people around you. Okay, I hate actually cutting this part short because I love seeing everyone interacting and connecting with each other, but let's, let's move forward in our worship. Um, I want to draw your attention, well, first of all, I want to welcome you here. So my name is Sabrina. If you're new here, um, I'm one of the pastors here, and I just want to let you know that you are so welcome. We're so happy um, to be together, to worship our God um, yeah, together. So welcome here, whether, whether you've been part of our church family for a long time or whether you're new here, um, you are welcome. Um, if you got a bulletin on your way in, then I want to draw your um, attention to a few of the things in there. And if you didn't get a bulletin, make sure you get one on your way out because there's so many good things happening. And whether these are things that you will actually be attending or not, um, we invite you to pray for everything that goes on here. So Sunday mornings, we're together, but all throughout the week, we have people coming in and we have a chance to connect with people. And so please pray that in everything that we do, that God would be glorified, that that his kingdom would come and that people would understand and come to know who God is through, through all the many programs that we have. So a few that I want to draw your attention to is that this Thursday is our next community dinner. Uh, and that happens at 5.30 in our gym. If it's nice out, then maybe we'll actually eat, be eating dinner outside. Um, this is an awesome way for us just to connect with our community and our neighbors. And so please um, pray for, the, for us leading up to Thursday. Pray for us on Thursday. We've been doing these dinners um, for over a year now, and it's just been incredible to connect with people. And, and Jesus tells us to love our neighbors as ourselves, right? And step one to that is actually getting to know our neighbors. Um, if you're able to help in the kitchen with the cooking, uh, this month, um, Marga is actually going to be taking care of the kitchen and the meals. So if you're able to help earlier in the afternoon, then talk to Marga about that. Um, if you're interested in coming for an awesome dinner and getting to know some neighbors, talk to me about that. Um, we're really looking forward to, to the dinner. Um, also, for all the ladies, um, as you know, we have yeah, been having an awesome ladies' ministry this past year. So we had a book study, and then um, just a few weeks ago, we had a movie night, and that was a great way just to connect and hear about the importance of prayer. Um, And on June 2nd, um, we're going to be having a tea together. So mark that on your calendar. It's going to be an awesome time. So you plan on coming. Also plan on bringing friends to that. Tickets are $10, and you can talk to Evelyn Wall in order to get a ticket. Or I'm sure um, that you can also talk to Trish in the front office, and she can um, sign you up for that. So June 2nd, mark that in your calendar now. You don't want to miss it. Um, Also, our quilting circle had their last um, quilting times together um, before a summer break this past week. And so I want to just celebrate and acknowledge that 127 quilts were made since January. Um, And these quilts are going to be sent around the world um, to just bring comfort and a sense of home and peace to people who are displaced and going through a really hard hard time in their lives. So through, through the efforts of our women and some of our men, um, yeah, we'll just be able to, to serve people in such a practical way and share the love of Christ with them. Um, and I'm going to pass this on to Lawrence right now. So I have a bit of information and a little request for a bit of help. 
Um, you may remember the nailers that were here a number of years ago and served us. They will be in town the first weekend in June. My original plan was to, to, we are going to host them. They're going to stay at our house, but I'm flying out next week to New Zealand for six weeks. So currently with my wife's health the way it is, I don't want her to do too much. <laughs> so if you're at all interested in uh, a little more information, they will come. They're, in a con they're at a conference. They'll be available in the afternoon of the Saturday. They'll probably like to come here on Sunday morning, and then they're going to head back to uh, back home. So if you're at all interested, please contact me after the, after the service, okay? Thank you. So in case you missed that, that's Brad and Darlene Naylor, who Brad used to be the associate pastor here. And so they're back in town and, and would love to reconnect with, um, yeah, just people who are part of, part of their ministry and their life while they were here. Um, bow with me in prayer right now. Father, we thank you so much that you are a good and a living God who's active and at work in this world and in our lives. Um, Father, you know exactly what we've experienced and gone through this past week and even just this morning. And so you know the heavy things that we're holding in our hearts and you also know the things that we're excited about and, and rejoicing over. And, and God, you're present with us in that. So even now as we shift our minds and our hearts to worship you, we open our hands and our hearts and our minds and we ask that yeah, that in a very tangible way you would meet with us exactly where, where we need you. Yeah, we pray that every song that's sung, every word that is spoken would be glorifying and honoring to you, that it would be a pleasing aroma to you. So, Father, we, we worship you now. We offer up this sacrifice of worship to you. Yeah, and it's in your holy name that we pray these things. Amen. Good morning. 127 or 137 quilts since January. 127 quilts since January. That's four months. That's more than a quilt a day. That's not even humanly possible, I don't think. That's crazy. Yeah, how amazing is that? Um, we want to continue... Uh, our service by singing some songs of praise together. If you're able to, would you please stand with me? Let's sing Open the Eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Again. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Sing that again. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you, I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, 
shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. High and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, 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 I want to see you. Sing that again, holy. Holy, holy. Sing, we want to see you holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. We want to see you. As we continue singing this morning, you'll notice that a lot of the songs, uh, today is actually Ascension Sunday. Um, you'll notice a lot of the songs that um, have been chosen this morning sort of have to do with uh, ascension, you know, high and lifted up, uh, God, Jesus being in heaven um, together with the Father, and, uh, and that's a celebration for us. So just keep that in mind as we continue singing. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. of all days, oh, so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all for love's sake became poor. So here I am. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. I'll never know. And I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross and I'll never know how much it 
cause to see my sin upon that cross and I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross so here I am to worship here I am to bow down here I am to say that you're my God you're all together lovely all together worthy all together wonderful to me let's sing that again so here i am to worship here i am to bow down here i am to say that you're my god you're all together lovely all together worthy all together wonderful to me please be seated of the earth, from the depths of the sea, from the heights of the heavens, your name be praised, from the hearts of the weak, from the shouts of the strong. From the lips of all people, this song we raise, Lord, throughout the endless ages, you will be crowned with praises, Lord, most high, exalted in Sovereign of all creation, Lord, most I be magnified from the ends of the earth, from the depths of the sea, from the heights of the heavens, your name. of the weak, from the shouts of the strong, from the lips of all people, this song we raise, Lord, throughout the endless ages, you will be crowned with praise.
Um, as the ushers come forward to take our morning offering, uh, would you pray along with me? God, uh, we we confess again today. We um, we join together. We join our voices and our and our thoughts together um, to praise you um, that you are Lord Most High. And the beautiful thing, the amazing thing, is that. Though you are Lord Most High, you are Lord most interested in what goes on with us here on earth. Um, you care about us. And how amazing is that, that the Lord over everything uh, would choose to be would choose to, to want to be to be near us, to be close to us. And thank you that through your spirit um, that is not only possible, but it's happening right now. Uh, and God, this morning as we... Um, we make a decision, we choose to uh, give a little bit of what we have uh, from our abundance. Um, it's our prayer that we would be doing this with, with generosity and not necessarily the amount that we give now, whether it's small amounts or large amounts. Uh, it's, it's our prayer that we would be generous, that we would open our hands And that again, uh, through the leadership in this church, that you would use um, the decisions that have already been made, um, that you would use the money that we give now um, here in this local community, um, around our city and across the country and around the world, the different projects that we're participating in. Yeah, thanks for what you're doing up here um, in our hearts. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns all music but its own. Awake my soul.
<laughs> it's time for Kid Zone. So if you're a child, feel free to meet us up here. Um, and we're going to head downstairs for our kids program. Who remembered their Bibles today? I did. Ayo. Nice. You got a few? Good, good. Who uh, remembered to do their homework this week? <laughs> it looks like you did a lot of um, backtracking. You, you caught up on your homework, eh? <laughs> That's good. I'm glad you brought those in. So, <clears throat> can anyone tell us what we have been learning about downstairs? <laughs> okay, who are we studying right now? Hey, does anyone know? Who, who do we learn about each week? Oh, Jesus! <laughs> Thank you. Whew. If you guys, <laughs> we've got a lot of work to do. So each week, we learn about Jesus, right? And we have been learning about his life here on earth, his ministry, so the things that he did and what he taught people so that they would know about him and know about God. Um, so now that the weather is getting nicer outside, what are some things that you are looking forward to doing? Soccer. Soccer. Um, growing flowers. Nice, growing flowers. Okay, this is our last one. Camp Crossroads. Nice. <laughs> I'm excited for that, too. Um, I, yes, I'm going with you. I have a friend who her favorite thing to do in the summer is to go swimming. And so she is very excited for her uh, local pool, her outdoor pool, to open up for the summer. Because she goes there like every single day. So how many of you have gone swimming before? Most of you. Have you guys ever um, tried that starfish where you're like floating in the water on your back? Have you tried that? Yeah? And you ha like sometimes it's a little bit scary, right? Because you have to like... Focus yourself and like just keep breathing. You're not gonna, you're not gonna fall, <laughs> right? And then the water gets so close up to your face sometimes, and you're like, oh my gosh, you're <laughs> that's so fun. So it's it takes some concentration, right? Um, well, in our passage today in the Bible, we are going to learn about a man who didn't just float on top of the water; he actually walked on top of the water. Who, who do you think it was? <laughs> who do you think it was? Jesus and Peter. Very good. So. Haley already knows this lesson. <laughs> well, this is a good thing you know this because you're actually my helper today downstairs, right? So maybe you'll help me teach the lesson, but it's very good. Yes, so we are going to learn about Jesus walking on the water to his disciples, and it's kind of a scary situation, so let's hope he made it. Let's find out. <laughs> we're going to find out if he sunk. So let's pray, and we're going to head downstairs. God, thank you for this beautiful weather outside. Thank you for um, the Sunday morning for this church that we have the opportunity to get together and be a family together and worship and learn about you together. I thank you for these kids. I thank you for the time that we have downstairs right now to learn about you and, and what it means to, to trust you and not to get distracted with what's happening around us, but to keep our eyes focused on you even when, when things seem impossible or scary. God, when we call out to you, you reach out to us, and so I pray for all of us, that we will remember, no matter what's happening, that we will continually be calling out and looking for you. And so I pray this in your name. Amen. Good morning. I have a verse from the Bible from nine, Psalm 95. It says, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving 
and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms, for the Lord is a great God. And we have much, much to, to praise him because we had such a storm last week. And I said yet to, to the friend I had at my place, I said, we should really pray that the Lord will protect us. And of course, there were little things, but not, not so bad. He protected us, and so we have much cause to praise him. And also that he is our Lord, and like uh, Matt said, that he's in heaven and he's praying for us. And when the devil is attacking us, he's there for us. And he's also preparing mansions for us. And we are looking forward to that, aren't we? So let us praise and, and thank the Lord for these dear people that we have on the list today. Herb and uh, Hebert and Julie Clausen, they are going for a walk today for MS. And let's pray for them that the Lord will protect them, and especially for Herb, who is not so strong, and that he will make it. And then we thank the Lord for Bob McColgan, who, who is here with us, and, but he still has some tests. And we just thank the Lord that he's doing better. And then also for Debbie, the mother of Megan, we also pray for her that the Lord will be with her. And we thank the Lord that Pam is here, but her stepdad, it could be any minute that he will meet the Lord. So let's pray for that dear family, Pam's stepfather. And then for Peter Longhurst and for Quinn, we just pray for them that the Lord will undertake for them. And then for our staff and for our elders, for Jeff Weens and for Rodney and for Trish Weens, Lord, we just thank you that you are with them. Give them wisdom in leading our church. And then we think of Annie Friesen and Anna Fast. Lord, undertake for their needs. And also for Martha Funk and Elfie Mason and for Gretel. Lord, we just thank you and praise you that you know their difficulties, but may they just worship you and praise you and you will heal them or do for them what is good for them. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. First Thessalonians 4, 13-18. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. So this morning we have Ed Heinrichs here with us, and you might have heard him give a loud cheer when Carissa mentioned um, that one thing she's looking forward to is Camp Crossroads this summer, and that's because Ed comes to us from Camp Crossroads, and so he made the long drive this morning from... Um, from the Muskokas, and he's here with us. And many, many in our congregation are familiar with him. Um, I have a long history with Ed. Um, actually, when I was in high school, then he was at Eden, working in what's now called the Spiritual Life Center. But he also pointed out that he knew Matt from there. Um, and then a number of our young adults have worked up at Camp Crossroads with him. And actually, Tim Dirksen and I went to Thailand with him and spent many hours in a van driving um, through Thailand. Um, and all of that to say, I'm really excited for Ed to be here this morning. Um, in my experience with 
with you, Ed. You are a man of wisdom and just godly presence. And so I'm really looking forward to hearing um, Ed share God's word with us this morning. And so I'm going to um, take some time to pray for him before I hand this over. Father, I thank you that, yeah, I mean, we've already spent time this morning praising you for your, um, yeah, I mean, the grandness. We can't even comprehend, um, yeah, just what it means that you are the Lord and creator of all things that you always were and you always will be. And yet, yet God, we praise you because we know that, um, yeah, just how amazing it is that you desire to be present and active in our lives and in this world. And so, Father, right now, I thank you for Ed. I thank you for the way that you've worked in his life um, all throughout. And I thank you for, for the work that you're doing in and through him up at Camp Crossroads, the lives that are being changed. I thank you that our brother is here with us this morning to share your word. And I pray that you would open our hearts and our minds to what you have to say to us this morning. And I pray that... Um, yeah, just that even as Ed, Ed shares, that he would know your presence in a very real way as well. In your name I pray, amen. Thank you, Sabrina. It is a privilege to be with you this morning and to spend this time together. Um, God is at work in this place. I sense that. Praise him for it. And what a gift you have in Sabrina and Matt. Thank you for the genuineness of uh, the worship this morning, since it was really coming from your heart. It's a privilege to be with you in this place. I have the opportunity to visit many different churches across Ontario. It's part of what I do. I'm not always at Camp Crossroads. We have a team up there, as many of you will know, and some of you have been a part of that team. Uh, how many of you have been to Camp Crossroads before? Just so I have a sense of of that. Carissa was excited about Camp Crossroads this summer. We're looking forward to another full full season. I'm just going to give a little bit of an update for those of you that have been there before and those of you that have never been there. There's an opportunity even next weekend for the uh, spring cleanup day, the work day. So come on up. Uh, can't guarantee that it'll be free of black flies. It is right now. But who knows by then, So, but it's Muskoka, we don't really have bugs, do we? So it's a great chance to invest in, in the kingdom in that way, and appreciate your prayers as well. We had a windstorm, as you did, and one of the major power lines on the property went down. A pole was knocked over with a transformer on it, so we're looking at uh, some significant issues there. Appreciate your prayers and your support for Camp Crossroads, because it's an ongoing need to just keep the place going. And we do that for good reason, and I want to talk a little bit about that uh, this morning. We want to celebrate what God is doing. Uh, camp exists. You see this in your bulletin. If you're not familiar with it, we have a laser focus on what we do there. Uh, when I started in 2013, I asked the question, why are we doing all of this? And so we developed this statement, and we remind ourselves, I remind myself of this regularly. I try to say this at least once a day because it reminds me of what I should be about. Camp exists as a Christ-centered ministry. Because Jesus is the one. We could stop right there. To focus on him is what it's about. Christ-centered ministry to support the local church. And that's why I'm here this morning. And that's why we invest in young people. That's why we want to support what you're doing. Kelly brought a van load of young ladies to camp last summer. And for me, when I saw them pull on and the doors open and those young ladies get out of that van, I thought, that's the mission right there. That if we can support what... Kelly and Scott Street are doing in this community, that's fulfilling the mission of what we're about. To support the local church and making disciples, because Matthew 28, what did Jesus say? All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, there it is, go and make disciples. There's a single purpose for every single one of us in this room, and that is to make disciples. And that's what we're going to continue to focus on. And we also get the opportunity to invest in developing leaders. And so thank you for the privilege of that. And one of the prayer requests I would mention in regard to that is we run a, uh, an LIT program. Last year we had a double cohort. We had two groups. It was twice as many as we usually do. We're going to do that again this year because there's so much interest in that program. But we are still looking for staff to, to provide the leadership for that program. So would you, anybody here willing to commit to pray for that very specifically, uh, even on a daily basis? That would be awesome if you can do that to, because that's a need as well as continuing to pray for camp in terms of safety and so on. So that's what we're about. It's a lot of fun up there. 
I wish we could zoom in on the face of the uh, young person on that tube that's about to drink a bunch of Black Lake water because they have fun in that place. The laughter, sometimes I feel bad for our neighbors because there's just so much noise around having that much fun. It's about making friends. It's about relationships. Some of you may well have met up at Camp Crossroads and as a result of that went on to get married. If that's your uh, story, give Camp 10% of what you think your marriage is worth. That's a small commission. <laughs> Think about it. Anyway, it is about friends. It's about uh, connecting with people. It's about community. And we continue to invest in that area. But more specifically, it's about faith. All of the other stuff is so that young people will be open to hearing the gospel, the message of who Jesus is, and respond to that. And we see that happening year after year after year. God, by his grace, reaches out, gets the attention of young people that are surrounded in a swirl of noise, and in that quiet place, God meets with them, and lives are changed as a result of that. So uh, we're, we're excited to continue to do that. I crunched some numbers in, uh, with Joe a few years back, and so I've been trying to update these. 47,000 campers. That's a lot of people at Camp Crossroads over these decades. Now, some of them came back year after year, but still each experience is new and fresh. 47,000, that's about a third the population of St. Catharines. That's a significant number of lives impacted. Uh, the number of spiritual decisions that we know about because we do track with that and the unknown because seeds are planted, God cultivates waters and those seeds will flourish and someday in the kingdom we're going to hear about how the investment that you have made in Camp Crossroads has reaped a harvest that we may not even know about. So we're excited about that, the over 1,500 first-time decisions. Uh, this year, in the winter, we had almost 700 young people. January, February. Program, not rental groups, that's just program groups. 700. Camp is year-round. We've got full house right now, and I think I've got a couple of pictures there as well. I talked about the leadership development. Um, we hear stories often about the, the impact that camp is. David, I can actually go back on this slideshow, can't I? But I, I want to highlight uh, this picture here is fresh. I got this uh, via Instagram just yesterday, and uh, we have a, uh, two groups at camp this weekend. One of them is a group of First Nations young people from Manitoulin Island. And we know that God's going to work in that place. And many of them come from very challenging home situations. Uh, we're partnering with uh, Derek Parento, who you may know through C2C Church Planning. Love that man's heart. He's a, he's a man seeking after God and after his kingdom and among the First Nations people up there. And so I'm going to ask you to pray this weekend that God would work powerfully and that a renewal would happen among the First uh, Nations in the north there, and particularly this group that's there from uh, Manitoulin Island. Um, I've told this story a few times, and I'm going to tell it again, even at the risk that I may have shared it with some of you. But it was last summer, we had a, uh, a volunteer come up to drive boat for a week. And at the end of the week, he got on the school bus that uh, the kids ride on their way home. And it was actually the bus that came out of Welland with the Rose City Kids Ministry that Southridge sponsors. And uh, this guy's a fairly big guy, and he's walking down the aisles. And as he was telling me this story, tears were running down his cheek. He said, Ed, I just got off the bus there. And uh, one of the young girls on the bus looked up at me as I walked through and said, thank you, I have never felt loved before in my life. This was the week where she felt loved through homemade buns, home-cooked meals, somebody driving a boat, cabin leaders that cared for her, and she heard the gospel. In that context, she heard the gospel. The potential for life change is huge. And those are the kind of stories that uh, we hear on an ongoing basis. Leadership development. How many of you have heard testimonies from baptismal people saying Camp Crossroads is where I met Jesus or where my... It just keeps happening and we praise God for that. That's God at work. It's not any of us. It's God at work. And uh, we're excited to be a part of that. And I'm asking you to partner with us to, to be a part of what God is doing. Visit the Camp Crossroads website. We try and keep it updated so that you can pray. The information is there so you can see who the speakers are, what the programs are that are running. And if you ever have any questions, call me. 
705-238-7116. My phone number is on the website. It's on the R Camp R Turn website as well. So I'm going to invite you to actually call me. And if you want to be a part of the great things that are happening, let me know. And we'd, we'd love to find a place for you to serve. It's not a vacation. It's not a retirement plan. It's a place to serve. You will go home tired. I can promise you that. If you've served for a week at Camp Crossroads or Gerhardt, are you still tired from being up there all those years? I'm thinking he, he still needs to rest. Is he having a mittag schlaf every once in a while? That's because he was working hard at camp. You will be tired. It's not a vacation. We're there to serve those that are there to relax. But I also promise this. You will be encouraged in who God is and how he works. So please consider being part of that. So that's kind of the, the update, and I'd love to share more of the stories. You hear the enthusiasm, the opportunities are many, and we look forward to seeing how God's going to work this year. So you've got some homework, a couple of prayer requests. The prayer warriors, those that are gifted in intercession, please join us in praying for those specific things, and uh, God will get the glory, and he will do the work for his kingdom to be advanced. So, yeah, thanks for the privilege of being here. I do want to look together with you into God's word, and it's fresh out of my own life experience right now. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, I've read this text many, many times as I was pastoring and uh, led at funerals. In particular, we tend to read this text when we are standing at the graveside and committing the body into the ground and uh, for burial. And for me, this past week, Monday, I stood at a graveside and uh, buried my father. It's that fresh. Uh, it's been a journey. It's been a process of uh, about a month watching him go home. It was uh, a little over a month ago. We were in the uh, doctor's office, and uh, the doctor shared with us his siblings first and said, uh, cancer's everywhere. And so, you know, we, we always want to know timelines as human beings, don't we? What's the timeline? He said, it won't be long. And so we expected a fairly short timeline. And uh, he lingered for about a month. And, but as soon as the doctor went into the room and told my dad, and we were all there with him, he said, Abe, it's everywhere. The cancer is everywhere. And uh, my dad looked at him unfiltered. My dad was getting on in years 84, and he didn't have many filters left. And at that moment, especially when all your emotions kick into gear, there really aren't any filters. So the doctor says, uh, it's everywhere. Time is short. My dad said, can I go tomorrow? Jesus is waiting for me. And that spoke volumes. That spoke volumes to me. Jesus is waiting for me. That's all the theology we need right there. That's the word of God. And so it was so encouraging to spend those hours with him. And what I started doing in my own personal devotions is digging into scripture to see where my dad was going. Because if Jesus is waiting, there's got to be something more than just that general sense of somebody. Where is he waiting? What's he bringing with him? Uh, you mentioned the mansions this morning. What's that about? Jesus said, I go and prepare a place for you. In my father's uh, house are many rooms. I go and prepare a place for you. What's that look like? And so that's where my mind is being. So this morning, I want to just share a little bit of me processing this reality. And Paul ends this section in 1 Thessalonians, and he tells us very explicitly, he says, uh, encourage each other with these words. So this morning, I want to encourage you that if you are in Christ... Here's my encouragement out of God's word. There's a place. We're going there because Jesus is faithful. If you are not in Christ this morning, if you have never entered into that personal, redemptive, saving relationship with Jesus, I'm going to leave you with this encouragement. Consider today. Consider today where you're going. Because the opportunity to respond in faith and to have a glorious hope is there for all of us. Are you encouraged already? It's in God's word. We can trust him. It is true. And so, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, thanks John for, for reading that and reminding us that uh, Paul is saying there, it's a familiar text for many of us that have been to, uh, to Christian funeral. I almost said Christian weddings. There's a similarity there for the Christian funerals before that uh, this is a familiar text. And Paul says about times and dates we don't need to write. He says, there's stuff that's mysterious. We, we don't know some of the answers to some of the questions that we ask. In the first part of uh, chapter 5, he says, that's the reality. There's still a mystery. But what we do know, we should not be ignorant about. And that's the language he uses there in 1 Thessalonians 
chapter 4, and it's page 906 in your Bibles. I don't put up the text for a reason because I want you to do some work. So if you don't have a Bible, grab one of these uh, New Living Translations. I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> we'll, we'll read it together, and I'm going to read it out of the NIV. So there's, uh, there's hope here, and let's encourage each other again with these. Brothers, sisters, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep. So what's the challenge here? We're not supposed to live in ignorance. And yet I feel that, and I think that many of us do, even as Christians. And I've been at Christian funerals, people that have lived their entire life attending church, and I've heard some statements made that reflect or that indicate a theological understanding that actually isn't biblical. And that's a problem. Because if we're not grounding it in truth, then we're living in ignorance. And we want to be grounded in truth, and we don't want to live in ignorance. And so he says uh, about those who fall asleep, we don't want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep, asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. And so there's some real encouragement built into this text. Jesus is trium triumphant. Jesus is triumphant. There is hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. Notice the, the preposition there, in him. That's why I stressed before the encouragement, if we are in Christ, this is true, and if we are not in Christ, we need to consider and be encouraged what that actually means, to be in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. Do you get, get the language there? Death seems so <laughs> final. It is so hard. It is so hard. And it's softened by this reality. What happens? What's your expectation when you fall asleep? Most of us fell asleep last night. Rachel, you're a trained medical person. What's the expectation when you fall asleep? To wake up. And so there's an awakening that, that's coming. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. As you hear the words with a loud command, think in the back of your mind when Jesus was standing at the graveside of Lazarus, what did he do? He what? What did he shout? He specifically said, Lazarus, come out. Because if Jesus had said, come out, what would have happened? All kinds of people would start walking around. That would have been a whole different scenario. Now he's coming again and he's shouting, come out. Think of that. That's exciting. That's something to hope for. With a loud Command with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. That's exciting. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. So there's some things we don't know and some things that we do know for sure that we can know. And I have to admit that uh, in that process of watching my dad declining, rapidly declining, and then eventually passing, there were some things that I have believed and there are some things that I have known. And suddenly you know more than just believe. Some things that you just know. By God's spirit, he presses those deeper into your heart and you just have a, a firmer grasp. Can I say that? on some things that are true, and so we're encouraged by that. I love our Confession of Faith, the MB Confession of Faith. If you've never read it, I would encourage you to do so, because it takes kind of the broad scope of what Scripture says and brings it down into some concise statements. And in fact, just referring back to Camp Crossroads now, we are expecting and pressing in with our summer staff uh, into the confession of faith because we want to make sure that we're on the same page so to speak literally a page but on the same page in terms of our understanding and it's encouraging to do that in fact in the application process just from an, a point of view of accountability we expected that applicants to this year's summer staff would have read the confession of faith 
and if they had any questions, we gave an opportunity for that. And the, tr and the training that's starting this week, we're going to be pressing further into that. So there's another encouragement for you to spend time. But it, it states there that we believe that our Lord Christ will return visibly and triumphantly at the end of the present age. The church must always be prepared to meet the Lord, living in expectation of his imminent return. So that's exciting news for us to consider. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. If he had simply died, that would not be enough because everyone dies. With very few exceptions, that's the human condition. The human condition is life is terminal. It ends at some point. But Jesus turns that around. He rose again. Jesus, death and resurrection, changes our perspective. It gives us a new way of looking at this stuff. There's been this door that every human being has walked through, again, with very few exceptions. Every human being walks through that door, and we wonder, what's on the other side of that door? And now suddenly, Jesus dies, goes through the door, and comes back out. He speaks with authority of what lies on both sides. In fact, not only does he speak with authority, but remember Matthew 28, he says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So not only does he speak with authority, he has authority over these things. What he says goes. And so there's a change in perspective. What, what could be, and usually is a very frightening prospect, suddenly takes on a different tenor. It has a different feel to it. There's someone who's gone through and come back. And he speaks with and has authority over these things. Jesus died, rose again on the third day. And that's worth celebrating. So that gives us hope. He's the one that's gone through. And it gives us hope that we too have victory over death. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the Apostle Paul, same person that wrote this letter to the Thessalonians, again speaking about the death and resurrection of Jesus, says that if Christ, that, uh, Christ has, if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection from the dead? And you may well hear that from some people. What a hopeless existence that is, to think that death is it and that's the end takes away all meaning from this life because we're reduced then to this set of biological urges, this chemical process, we're taking up space, and what's the point? But the fact that Jesus died and rose again gives hope for this life and for the life to come because Jesus Christ died and rose again. He's the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The first fruits, the first one, and there's more coming after him. So let's look at the resurrection of Jesus just uh, briefly to remind ourselves of some of the things that are true there. Because again, I've heard people talk like this. Oh, they, somebody that passed away, oh, they've become an angel now. Yes or no? I've heard it from Christian church people. We don't ever become angels, as good as you may be. In fact, little, we're a little lower than the angels now. Do you know what happens at death? <coughs> Promotion. Because we will actually judge the angels. So something happens in the death of a person that changes who we are. So Jesus' death becomes a model for us in that he rose again. So a couple of things. One is Jesus rose from the dead physically. How do we know? Well, there are a number of indicators in the Bible. One is the stone was rolled away. Ghosts don't need stones rolled away. It's interesting evidence of his resurrection. Um, he eats with his, I'm encouraged by this one. I like good food. I know Scott Street makes good food. When I hear this munch a bunch, a bunch or chew and chew and chat, munch, chew, chat and chew, that sounds like the kind of event I could go to. Jesus eats with his disciples. They broil some fish. He eats with them. 
So the resurrection, the hope that we have is that the resurrection isn't just into some kind of existence, but it's an actual physical resurrection. It's a physical resurrection. We're not ghosts. We eat, and he ate it in their presence. And it says in Acts 1-4, while he was eating, he's talking to them. Mysterious stuff. Mysterious stuff. And he invites Thomas to touch the wounds. And in fact, in Revelation, after he ascends, it says that he looked like a lamb that was slain. He bears the marks of the crucifixion forever. It's interesting. It's a physical res resurrection, and even the glorified Jesus bears the marks of the crucifixion. The wounds were still evident. The disciples recognized him. So I expect, I fully expect, that when we're in eternity, we will bump into each other, and you'll be like, Ed, I remember you, I nodded off during your sermon at Scott Street that, that time. Some of what you probably said is true. Look at it. You missed a few points, but you're going to recognize me. I'm going to recognize you. Encourage each other with these words. We're not completely transformed. And so will scars stay there? I don't know. Jesus' scars remained. Maybe the marks. I've got a few scars. Maybe they'll be there. Maybe they won't. I, I don't know. But according to what Jesus shows us, they recognized him. Now, there is an instance in Luke 24, and some of you might be like, hang on a second. And you want to have that biblical debate. It says in Luke 24 that the disciples didn't recognize him because they were kept from recognizing him. So something was veiled in their understanding. But then they went on to actually recognize him. He appears to over 500 people. Now, there's some mystery here as well. We talk about a meeting, we talk about the uh, stone being rolled away, but he suddenly appears among them. So there's a different set of physical realities or laws that apply to the resurrected Jesus. Will we be changed in that way? I don't know. It's a mystery about dates and times and some things we're not going to argue about because not, they're not core to our salvation or to our belief. And we'll say, God will figure it out, but it's going to be good. It's going to be good. It gives us hope. He appears. He disappears. He told Mary at first not to touch him. He had not yet ascended to the Father, and yet he eats with them. So there's some powerful stuff at work here. And uh, we don't become angels. We are resurrected physically. In the meantime, there's a sleep. So I've been thinking a little bit about that. Even this morning, I was up fairly early, beautiful morning, thinking a little bit about sleep, and I could have used a couple of more minutes, but that's all good. But... Have you ever noticed, so we buried my dad, so he physically is asleep right now. Do you know when you fall asleep? Do you, does your mind say, okay, I'm sleeping now? What happens while you're asleep? I remember as a kid getting in the car and driving the hum of the road and you fall asleep, right? And what happens next? Suddenly you're there. Right? Has it ever happened to you where you fell asleep in the car or in a plane or whatever, and then you wake up and it's like, oh, we're there. And time passed like that. There's an imagery there, and I don't want to push it too far. But in, just in me, I'm convinced that you fall asleep and they wake up and they're there. Because when you sleep, time passes. There's something strange going on cognitively there because we are never separated from Christ ever so something mysterious is happening even with time and God is not bound by time so he can work outside the parameters you can spend the afternoon thinking about that just before you fall asleep for your mitachlof and then you're awake and it's like where did that three hours go I'll be driving home hopefully not hopefully not sleeping and so there's some interesting things, some mysteries around this, but we can take hope in the midst of even asking the question and wondering. In fact, it's important and it's necessary 
for this transformation through the death and the resurrection to happen. Because in 1 Corinthians 15 again, Paul says, I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet call. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. So there are some things that stay the same and some things that change. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with, clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. There's the hope. There's the truth that we can cling to and that we can know no matter what the circumstances of our lives. Amen? Amen. That's the truth. Death has been swallowed up in victory. And that happened on the cross and in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He took captive death and put it on display. And what the enemy intended for evil, God turned around and made for our own good. That's exciting. That is just exciting news for us to be reminded of. It changes our perspective on this life. It really does. It certainly changes our prospects and our hope for the future. We know where we're going. We can answer that question. Where are you going? With some degree of certainty, at least in some regards. And I'm convinced that the stuff we don't know, we don't need to know right now. There's enough there to know what we need to know and build our hope on that. And it's enough that we know to have faith in what we don't know. To hang on to these things. So it changes our future. Um, Cheryl and I had the privilege of going to Iguazu Falls. This We were like, the Weenses are there. I think I smelled Abe Weenses' cologne. Because they had just, I think you had just been there after we were there. I had had the opportunity to go to Iguazu um, Falls. Absolutely breathtaking. It's a shame. Is this going on the internet? It's a shame what's been done to Niagara Falls. It's tacky. It's not the way it was intended to be. Iguazu, they've been able to keep it fairly natural. I had been there before, and Cheryl, my wife, had not been. So I knew what to expect. She didn't know. So my anticipation was actually here, and hers were like, I think it's going to be good because Ed keeps saying it's going to be good. She had seen pictures. But I was anticipating more because I knew some things she didn't know. So here's my encouragement to you this morning. Dig into Scripture to find out what's waiting for us. Why not do a personal study? Why not take some time to look through the scriptures and to find those texts that give us indications of what the marriage feast of the Lamb, Jesus is going to prepare a meal for us. Now, you have some respectable cooks in this congregation. I'm telling you, some of the best borscht I've had, Kathy Wall. Mmm, fresh-baked Svebox? Mm-mm. That's good stuff. I'll do respect, Kathy. If Jesus is going to prepare that meal for us, let's all sit down and enjoy that. Like, we can expect and anticipate that. And we can enjoy the things on this, this earth with the anticipation of what's coming, and it'll be even better. Amen? It's going to be better, the anticipation. We know what's waiting for us. So it changes our future. It gives us a hope. We're not ignorant. And so it also, here are the three points. For those of you that like three points in a, in a sermon, it changes our future because it gives us hope and it changes our present because it gives us purpose. I mentioned at the beginning of this message about the number of decisions that have been made at Camp Crossroads. That makes a difference for those young people and for those individuals in this life and forever. That's what we're about, where our present is transformed by the death and resurrection of Jesus and the hope that we have that we also will die and rise again in him that we can bring others with us. And that's the mandate. Go and make disciples so that their lives can have meaning and purpose and so that they can also have that same hope. Because here's my encouragement. Look around this week. Look into the eyes of people 
and ask yourself, do they need hope? Do they need some good news in their lives? I believe we're surrounded by people that need to know the hope of the reality of who Jesus is. And so the death and resurrection of Jesus gives us that hope. There's so much more in here that I would love to unpack. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually push a button here. I think one of the songs that we sang talked about ascending and meeting Jesus in the air. And I, I don't remember exactly which one. But we often think that heaven is out there. Where are we going? Is it up there or is it down here? I don't want the church to split over this, okay? But it's worth thinking about. Is it up? In my father's house are many rooms. I go and prepare a place for you. I love that scripture. You're right. That's, and we ascend and meet Jesus in the air. I'm kind of throwing out a controversial one at the end here, but that, I think that's okay. Then what happens? New Jerusalem. Where's the heaven that we're going to? The word that's actually used in the original, the language suggests kind of like when you stay in a hotel for a period, you have a room, and then you leave that room to go to your destination. Think about that for just a minute. Because often people, and I've, I've worked with guys that said, man, if all it is a bunch of chubby angels playing harps up in heaven, why would I want to go there? That's a valid point. I'm qualified maybe to be a chubby angel. But I don't want to float around playing the harp. And as you look into scripture, Jesus in Matthew 24 talks about at the renewal of all things. Like we've had some phenomenal experiences. I talked about Iguazu, or I think of Camp Crossroads. When the mist is rising on the lake early in the morning, it's like glass. You think, does it get better than this? And the answer is, yes. So heaven is actually going to be the place that God reconstructs at the renewal. It's not just new, it's renewed. It's brought back to what he intended in the first place. And it's better than any of us can imagine. Is that something to hope for and to long for? And to bring others to? Absolutely. Hope you're encouraged this morning to consider again what it means to be in Christ and to have the hope of the resurrection because he has conquered death and he has made a way for us to know the Father and to live with him forever. Can I pray for you? Father, thank you for your word. It's true. We cling to it, sometimes in desperation and sometimes in confidence. And we just trust you, God, to continue to be at work in our own hearts, to continue to remind us of the good things that we have, the inheritance that we have in Christ. Thank you for each person in this room, and I just pray a blessing that this week we would live in the hope and the assurance of faith that comes through knowing Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ed. Um, let's, let's respond uh, to what we've heard. Uh, so if you're able to, again, let's stand together and, and we'll sing. Um, and we'll, we'll treat this song as our, as, our, uh, as our benediction as we go from here, okay? So this is Amazing Grace.
Oh, 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 Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King of glory, who rules the nations with truth and justice, shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You laid down your life. That I would be set free. you've done for me. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay sing for all that you've done for me. Let's sing that again. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross. You lay down your I sing for all that you've done for me. Amen. Let's go with that in our hearts. Have a great week and go in peace.